Welcome to our tutorial about query strings. So far, we've been using ViewState to transfer data. But ViewState has got some limitations. One of its limitations is that it's tied to a specific page. If we move to another page, then the info stored in the viewed page will be lost. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to use a query string to transfer information between pages. Let's drag out a hyperlink control from our toolbox. And let's hard code in the navigate URL property of the hyperlink. Next page. Dot ASPX. Question mark. After the question mark, that's where the query string starts. My value equals text1. Next we'll use the amper symbol and my value 2 equals text2. OK. We've got two variables here. My value 1 and my value 2. Both variables contain strings, text1 and text2, respectively. Now we need to create a second page. Add new item. Let's rename our new page nextpage.aspx. Leave the place code in separate file option checked and click Add. Now let's go to Code View and use the Page Load Event procedure. Page events, load. Let's type some code. Response, period, write, Q string, and request dot query string. Open parenthesis, my value one. Close quotations and close parenthesis. Space, amper symbol space, and let's go to our next line with an underscore. Let's insert a break here. Request, query string, open parenthesis and quotation, my value two. Note the value in the query string collection is indexed by variable name. If I misspell the variable name, I'll get an empty string. Let's see how it works. Our page loads. Here's our hyperlink. I click on it and I get to my next page. I retrieve text1 and the text2 strings. Up in our address line you can see the query string. OK, let's go back. Query string. Now let's go back to default.aspx. I'm going to bring in two text boxes and a button. We'll name and caption them appropriately now. TXT1 and TXT2. Let's go to the button, BTN Next. Let's caption the button Next as well. and double click. I'm going to pause the video for a moment to type in some code. OK, I'm back. We're using the redirect method now, which has a string argument as a URL. Let's test it out. Let's type some text.
and here also. Now let's click Next. We've obviously got some problem. Let's go figure out what it is. There we go. Let's try it again. Enter some text. Tom. Next box. Smith. And let's click Next. Once again, in the URL path, we see our query string. The query string has some limitations, obviously. It's visible to user in the address path, for example. I can simply type some text here to replace the original values, and it'll appear on the page. Another limitation is that the query string can only be a simple string. There's also a limit on the length of the string. So you can't place a large amount of information into the string. And this concludes our tutorial about the query string.